This is Elias walking you through the steps of extraocular motility. And uh, to do this, we have to see three things initially, which are the smooth pursuit movement, and they include ductions, which are individual movements of the uh, two eyes, versions, which are synchronous movements of both eyes, and then virgins, which are opposite movements of both eyes. So the way to do this is you are going to take an accommodative target and you will sit in front of the patient. Now, when you have to move the, the target anywhere, you are not moving it horizontally. You're basically moving it and then bringing it outside so that the bridge of the nose never comes in the way. So what you do is I usually like to first give an accommodative target and see whether there's any deviation in the primary movement, so I do a cover test and uncover test, a cover test and uncover test, and then an alternate cover test. After which, I will start moving the accommodative target to the left and out. So we are moving the accommodative target left and out to the extreme gaze, and this by this way, I have seen the first version movement and when I'm at this extreme gaze, I'm going to cover one eye and then uncover and then cover the other eye and uncover to look at ductions. And then I'm going to create an H while always covering and uncovering the eyes so that I can measure the ductions at the extreme positions, cover, uncover, cover, uncover, and then all the way here with cover, uncover, cover, uncover. And I switch my hands, I bring it here. So cover, uncover, cover, uncover, and then go all the way down. So when, when he is going down, then I cannot see the eyes. So what I will do is I will put my hand here and just slightly lift the lids. And I'm at this extreme position, I'm going to do cover, uncover, cover, uncover, and then bring it here cover, uncover, cover, uncover, and then all the way down and out, cover, uncover, cover, uncover. After doing this, I'm going to bring it back to the primary position. Now, if you notice, I created a square, and then at the primary position, I'm going to bring the eye as close to his, uh, the, the target as close to his nose as possible so that I can look at the virgins and thus see convergence. So I bring it forward, 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 forward and see whether the convergence is intact. And then I'm going to take it all the way back to see whether the divergence is intact. Once this is done, I want to look at sackets, which are the rapid eye movements. And what I do is I'm going to sit right in front of him. I'm going to have two targets. So I'm going to take this torch. I'm going to keep the torch in the primary position while the other target is going to be in an extreme position. And then I'm going to direct the patient to look at the light when I say light and then the target when I say target. So light, target, light, target, light. And then I'm going to shift, take it in the other side. Now the accommodative target is in the primary position while the light is in the extreme right position. And I'm going to ask, direct the patient to do exactly what he had done earlier. So target, light, target, light, target, light. So I've seen the horizontal circuits and now I'm going to do the vertical circuits once again, keeping the target in the primary position and the uh, light in the extreme up direction and target up target, light, target, light, and then repeat it for down. So target, light, target, light, target, light. And this way I have basically seen all the movements. So if I were to show this, what we are doing in extra motility is we are looking at ductions, which are movement of either eye Separately, we are looking at versions, which are movement of both eyes.
together. We are doing voyagings, which are convergence, which is inward movement, of both eyes together and then divergence which are outward or opposite movement of both eyes together. So if the reductions are better than versions that means that the absence of a particular movement that you saw is because of cross or uncross fixation which means the other eye is directing where that eye is going to go and uh, there is no extra muscle problem if ductions and versions both are less that means there's an extra muscle problem now for sockets what you are looking at are uh, the rapid eye movement and they will differentiate they come handy when ductions and versions both are deficient and by doing that rapid movement you can differentiate between paralysis or paralysis where if the muscle is not working fully, you will see a drifting or a slower movement of the affected eye compared to the normal or good eye. You can also differentiate between any restrictive muscle sequelae and in that, what you see is you will see a dog on a leash phenomena, which is that the speed of the eye movement will be the same, but then it will stop with a jerk. Now, the way to interpret the duction and versions are by drawing this cross and this is the nose of the patient when the right eye is in the extreme right and looking up that is where the superior rectus would be working and when it is extremely out and looking down that's when the inferior rectus would be working and when it is in towards the nose and looking up that is when the inferior oblique is working and when it is in and looking down that is when the superior oblique is working and in horizontal positions when it can look in you can assess the medial rectus while when it looks out you can assess the lateral rectus. Asking it fine to look all the way to the left the lateral rectus of the left eye and the medial rectus of the right eye are working normally when I ask him to look to the left and up, then the inferior, uh, the superior rectus of the left eye comes in action and the inferior oblique of the right eye comes in action. When I ask him to look left and down, the inferior rectus of the left eye comes in action, whereas the superior oblique of the right eye comes in action. Now, when I go on the other side and ask him to look in the extreme right, the lateral rectus of the right eye is working and the medial rectus of the left eye is working. When I ask him to look all the way up, now we are looking at the action of the superior rectus of the right eye and the inferior oblique of the left eye. And when I ask him to look down and to the right, then the inferior rectus of the right eye is working and I'm also looking at the action of the superior oblique of the left eye. Thank you.